All right. I'm back. Okay, so the question is, if, if, if using a lasso tool to shade and lighten my scenes, delays or speeds up my work? Does it delay your work? Does it delay my work? And the answer is no, it actually speeds it up because um, I can just kind of throw a big shape in there real quick and fill it. And then, um, whereas if I did a pencil or a paintbrush, uh, I would spend a lot more time noodling it and filling it in by hand and stuff. <laughs> and um, I'm trying to refine the edge, whereas the lasso tool is nice because it just has this hard line edge. And um, so I learned it working on the Kung Fu Panda movies. They used it for the style of like the dream sequences. And then I just kind of fell in love with it. and. Um, it really, I think it's really sped up my my workflow. There are times though when I want to really kind of noodle the the um, shadows more than I normally would because it might be something extremely detailed or something. And so I'll use a paintbrush for those, but I'll always kind of go in there and clean it up with a lasso tool. Not always, but most of the time I do. Just because it, it has, there's something about it. Something fancy. I don't know how to explain it other than it it, it 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 makes it faster for me. So yes, it would. If if things like slow me down a lot, then I I tend to try to um not do them as much. I mean, unless it unless it makes the work look really good, you know, like the whole process of printing things out and inking it. Obviously, it takes a lot longer than just doing it all digitally, but. Um, I just love the way the Pentel brush pen looks and I wanted this book to have that whole feel and I wanted to get good at the brush pen so I I just kind of started using it for this book and that was my kind of my um, what is it my rule my rule for this book is it's all done with the brush pen and I know that uh, like when I did remind my first graphic novel. I My rule for that one was, um, sorry, I'm forgetting where my fire is. There we go. My rule for that one was all doing it, doing it all with a uh, pencil. The final lines were all pencil and then I would scan those pencils and boost the contrast and all that stuff and then it would look really nice in Photoshop. And it looked like inks, kind of, but it was all pencil. And I could control it with the pencil because I could control pencils really well. But then towards the end of that book, I started getting really tired of doing just pencils. And I was really, like, eager to try out the brush pen. And so you might notice that some of the pages at the end of Remind 2 are actually inks with the brush pen even though that was my rule, but I broke it because I was starting to get tired of it. I've been struggling with some time. It's, is it ever too late in age, I mean, to start your own comic or work as an illustrator? You know, the, the older you get, the harder, the less time you have to work with, and time is also always on your side when you're younger, but there's so many outlier stories of people in their old age starting things, whether it's franchises or getting popular because of a piece of work or whatever, that I think it would I think it's I think it's pessimistic to think that you that you're ever too old. You know what I'm saying? Um, and that pessimistic attitude will stop you from trying. And the thing is you you might you might write a book when you're 90 and it might be the greatest thing that the world's ever seen, you know? And so to, um, maybe you can't cash in for, for 50 years on royalties, but you can still make that great piece of work um, at whatever age you are. You know, there's always restrictions the older you get, like maybe eyesight or mobility or 
or whatever, but, um, you know, and the stuff that I worry about. But, you know, on another, on the flip side, I was looking at some Google statistics on keywords, right? This was a couple of years ago, too. And this really encouraged me. Um, so when Google did this search of all the key, all keywords, they, they can look at all data in all the books that they've put into Google throughout history. And when they do searches on authors' names, um, the, the, the popularity of that word being used in literature and text and speech that's been recorded throughout history, the, the popularity is like nothing until the author is about 40 years old. And then after 40, the popularity line just starts, of that word being used, which is the author's name, just starts steadily going, going up. And it keeps going up all their life, and it keeps going up after that. And so that was really encouraging to me because I was I was about ready to turn 40 and I was like, you know, is it too late for me to to really establish my name? And I realized after that that, no, I'm not. It's not too late, you know. Um, I just need to keep making stuff and putting it out there. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so oh, I don't know if that helps or means anything to you guys but it really meant something to me when I saw it and it encouraged me a lot so I think especially with authorship and especially with creating stories I don't think if you make a bad if you make a bad story yeah it's gonna be hard but if you make a good story it's just I think it'll just keep building in time over time and keep potentially growing so it's the question is can you make a good story you know, if if you can actually make a story, say say someone's 90, <laughs> okay, let's just throw out that number. Someone's 90 years old, and they make an amazing story. Why wouldn't it? Why wouldn't it slowly grow and build? You know, I mean, maybe it's maybe it's a matter of they make it and they put it in a drawer and no one sees it. But maybe someone, maybe the grandkids see it after 50 years and pull it out and publish it. I don't know, you know, but. The, the, the real question is, can you make a good story? And I think anyone at any age can. It, it's the thing that we wrestle with is, can we cash in on that story? And it's, I, you know, you, obviously if you're 20 and you make an amazing story, you can cash in on, on the rest of your life. And so I think that's the biggest um, difference. Stanley started at 40. That's amazing. One of my, um, one of the best directors I worked with, he was a total jerk, but huge director back when I was doing storyboarding. He was a photographer before that, and he started it. Um, like his career really started around 40, when he was 40. And he'd been working, doing all kinds of stuff all of his life. Um, and he was like the, he was like the hip young director <laughs> in, in the eyes of everyone. They're like, how can we do this, what this guy does? And um, and he got all the music videos that were popular, and he did all this. He had huge million-dollar budgets for commercials, and um, and he started. You know, he was so that was directing, commercial directing, and that commercial directing seems like kind of a a younger man's sport. I don't know, maybe not. But anyway, he was really good. How many pages do you prefer seeing in a trade paperback? or in a standalone graphic novel. I'm always curious to hear that folks input. It uh, it depends. I don't like seeing less than like 60. It's, I, I if I wanna buy a collection, I wanna get a collection. So I want 150 or more, you know, that's nice for me. And, and if you can get, you know, a even bigger one, if you really love the art and stuff, you can get a big thick book and that's even better. Appreciate you guys joining me. Um, if you uh, like like these live streams, you can see more of them archived at my Patreon page. Patreon.com backslash Jason Brubaker. Um, if you like these textures, you can get them at Gumroad. I sell them there for like 10 or 20 bucks for all of them. Um, gumroad.com backslash 
Jason Brubaker. All right, thanks again. See you next time. Hi guys, if you like this artwork, it comes out in a book called Sithra the Deep. And it comes out on February 1st. It's in pre-order sales right now. It's 176 pages of full color awesomeness. It was originally published on Webtoons, but now you can get it in hardcover book form. You can pre-order it now on IndieBound, Barnes & Nobles, Amazon, and for Canada, you can go to Indigo.